Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to try a little more lighthearted topic. I want to show you an article. I want to comment on an article I found in the online publication Junge Freiheit. So the online version that is. It is a weekly appearing newspaper. They say Wochenzeitung für Debatte. So it's a weekly newspaper for political debate. Mostly it is I think the most uh, conservative, most right-wing newspaper in Germany. And um, I am considering actually to um, start a subscription for that newspaper. I was reading the online version for a longer time already. And unfortunately, I cannot buy them at any newspaper store. So I think I just have to uh, have a subscription of the newspaper. I find the articles very interesting in here. You find a lot of good uh, articles, very interesting ones. And today I just want to show you one. So as you can see, there are lots of uh, political articles here. Um, a little bit history, philosophy, all that good stuff. But uh, today it's more about culture. The topic is, <laughs> yeah, I, I could donate now. The topic is the um, separation of the sexes in certain situation in a German life, especially in private life. Um, I actually didn't know the words for this uh, kind of phenomenon. It is called Sauerländer Runde or um, Westfälische Reihe. I have never heard of that. Uh, but the phenomenon is, of course, very well known. And uh, let me know in the comments below if that is also um, observable in your countries, in your cultures. In Germany, it is very usual. And um, the phenomenon is that if there is a social event, let's say a garden party or somebody's birthday uh, or a family gathering like uh, Eastern or Christmas, There is a larger group of men and women. And um, in Germany, I should also say, uh, you sit for these um, festivals. You sit a lot and you eat and you talk. And yeah, when uh, the food is um, eaten, uh, then you still remain seated. And then like an hour later, you have sweets and coffee. And it's basically a lot of sitting and talking. And the thing that happens then, the curious thing, I guess, is that um, men will sit together and talk and women will sit together and talk. And of course, uh, they will talk about very, very different things. So the example that they give in the article is here. Uh, let's imagine there is a, a party and all the men, you see them after a couple of minutes, they stand around the beer keg and uh, they drink and they talk about um, maybe um, technology or cars or some politics, the economy or investing or something. And then the women would sit in a couch corner and they talk about something that has more to do with human relationships or interactions, family life, all this kind of stuff, more emotional topics, maybe. This is something that can be observed very, very often in Germany. And um, yeah, we don't really talk about that so much, but it is a commonly observed phenomenon. So the author also goes to say that um, if women would join, a single woman would, for example, join this group of men, she will be accepted very easily into um, this um, group of men. Whereas the other way around, it is a little more difficult. So if a man would actually try to sit and join into the conversation that the females have, um, that is not so easily done. The women would disapprove of that, actually. It's also interesting that uh, one way that men could, for example, establish a hierarchy in their little circle is the order in which you actually say cheers to another person. So we call that zu prosten. That means we say prost, cheers, and we um, yeah, hit our uh, beer mugs together. That, uh, and, and that you can do in a certain order. 
with eye contact, of course. And uh, this can be used to establish a hierarchy between men. That is also something I never thought about, actually. There is a, a pedagogue called Andrea Höttger and in the Landwirtschaftlichen Wochenblatt, so that seems to be a also another weekly appearing newspaper, uh, she commented on this phenomenon and she said it, it might have a historical background, that is that in church um, there used to be separation of the sexes as you can see here for example you see um, when you would face the altar um, you would see the women on the right and the men on the left uh, of course this is uh, no longer uh, practiced in a catholic church in germany that is historically it was like that but nowadays this separation is no longer practiced in church but then you can also imagine that uh, the pressure to appear attractive to the opposite sex is no longer there and people just feel more secure and more safe in the company of uh, other men or other women. Um, there are some other places where there is a separation of the sexes of course. There is for example women's saunas. These are days. Normally you have to know that in a German sauna you are naked and uh, the genders, uh, the sexes are not separated. So normally, on a normal sauna day, both men and women are naked in the sauna and nobody thinks anything uh, weird about that. But nowadays, it's a more modern phenomenon. Younger German women don't want that anymore. They want their own sauna day. So let's say on Thursday afternoon, there is Women's Day and men are then not allowed to go into the sauna. And men don't really complain about that. This is accepted. But um, Miss uh, Höttger says that the other way around, women complain. Think about it from the United States, for example. There was this uh, controversy about um, the Boy Scouts, yeah? that uh, girls were not allowed into the Boy Scouts, even though there are Girl Scouts also, right? And now I think the situation is that girls are allowed in the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts still exist. So, yeah. So that means boys or men are not allowed to have their own space, but uh, girls or women are allowed to have their own space. And, for example, uh, this was an example from America now, but what Miss Höttger says is that we have, for example, these old uh, student unions, these are uh, very... Um, historical clubs actually they go back to when uh, young Germans were fighting against Napoleon or when they took part in the revolution of 1848-49 when they tried to have a German nation state and to form a republic uh, which was ultimately unsuccessful and this is why a lot of white Americans have actually German ancestors because a lot of these disillusioned men um, actually went to America because here the counter-revolution, the reactionary forces around Metternich, uh, they won. And there was a lot of censorship, there was a lot of oppression and not so much uh, opportunity here in Germany. This is why they left to America, for example. So from these times, there are still these uh, male-only student unions and they practice traditions like fencing and competitive drinking and all that stuff. And also they have these evenings when um, there are no women allowed uh, in the house or in the room because um, yeah, when, the, when they do this competitive drinking, for example, it can get a little rough verbally, so a little uh, vulgar maybe. And uh, it is maybe, uh, maybe you can say it's anachronistic nowadays or it's no longer... Uh, it, it doesn't fit into the modern world really any, anymore, but there is this chivalry kind of gentleman-like attitude that when you talk uh, in an impolite manner that you shouldn't do that in front of women. So uh, basically, so th it is not that they don't like women, it is just that when they want to talk among men, they don't think that this rough or rather impolite, unpolished language would be fit for the delicate ears of the ladies. So it is more this uh, chivalry, um, acting polite and civil in front of women um, idea that makes them exclude the women there. And there is actually a lot of um, attacks on these old traditional uh, student groups where 
women, for example, would demand that they are just all overall disbanded or that they would be accepted or admitted into the group or something like that. So um, the, the houses of these um, unions are often under attack, like um, there is acts of vandalism against them, for example. And, and this is where you can see that men normally, they understand that women need their space and that they want their their women's circles and their activities where men are excluded. But when it happens the other way around, then women become aggressive and uh, they become uneasy and they want uh, to knock on the door and force their way in because, who knows, the men could say something that they don't like behind their backs. And because women are very good at networking and um, managing and setting up social uh, structures, and relationships with other people to their benefit and they need to have all the info all the time they know exactly that it would be to their disadvantage if men would have the opportunity to talk undisturbed um, among just men this is what they don't want to allow under uh, all cost it is also said that this phenomenon occurs uh, in all different regions in germany and throughout all age groups so it's not specific to a certain generation or a certain tribe from a certain region here it is pretty much universal in germany so um, let me know if you like this kind of format where i go over an article and uh, translate or explain in english the key points an article that i find interesting also let me know if uh, such a thing uh, here you see for example a party uh, all the girls on one table all the boys on another table and they probably talk about very different things and here is some kind of historic uh, painting that is or a drawing that uh, pretty much shows that all the uh, men sit on the left side of the table and all the women and it seems like that they're not really talking to each other, but um, the men are talking among themselves and the women also do the same thing. And the child is there in the middle. <laughs> so let me know if that also is the case in your countries and um, what you think about that. Yeah, so I wish you um, all the best and catch you guys again later. Servus, Kameraden. <laughs>